These are the elements and compounds from which all humans are made. They're incredibly, almost embarrassingly common. In fact, almost 99% of the human body is a mixture of air, water, coal and chalk, with traces of other slightly more exotic elements like iron, zinc, phosphorus and sulphur. Air, water, coal and chalk. How the wonders of creation are assembled from such simple building blocks is surely the most intriguing Air, question we can ask. And chalk. Air, water, coal and chalk. This film is the story of a series of bizarre and interconnected discoveries that revealed a hidden face of nature. Think of the way a steady wind blowing across sand creates all kinds of shapes. The grains self-organize into ripples, waves, and dunes. This happens even though the grains are virtually identical and have no knowledge of the shapes they become part of. Chemicals seeping across an embryo might cause its cells to self-organize into different organs. The way Belousov's chemicals move as coordinated waves is exactly the way our heart cells are coordinated as they beat. Turing would never know that his ideas would inspire an entirely new mathematical approach to biology, and that scientists would find equations like his really do explain many of the shapes that appear on living organisms. On the 8th of June, 1954, Turing's body was found by his cleaner. He died the day before by taking a bite from an apple he'd laced with cyanide, ending his taking own life. a bite from an apple he'd laced with cyanide ending his own life. While the connection might not appear obvious at first sight, other scientists show that if you left a variation of Belousov's chemicals unstirred in a petri dish, instead of simply oscillating, they self-organize into shapes. In fact, they go beyond Turing's simple blobs and stripes to create stunningly beautiful structures and patterns. These are Turing's own very rough scribblings of how this might work. They show how a completely featureless chemical soup can evolve these strange blobs and patches. In his paper, he refined his sketches to show how his equations could spontaneously create markings similar to those on the skins of animals. Turing went around showing people pictures, saying, doesn't this look a bit like the patterns on a cow? And everyone sort of, well, what is this man on about? But actually, he knew what he was doing. Because, yeah, indeed, his pe they did look like patterns on a cow, and that's one of the reasons why cows have this sort of dappled pattern or whatever. So um, an area where mathematics had never been used before, pattern formation in biology, animal markings, suddenly the door was open. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are grey. I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Entry 33 in Fat Journal, i.e., his exegesis. This loneliness, this anguish of the bereaved mind, is felt by every constituent of the universe. All its constituents are alive. Thus, the ancient Greek thinkers were hylozoists. A hylozoist believes that the universe is alive. It's about the same idea as panpsychism, that everything is animated. Panpsychism, or hylozoism, falls into two belief classes. One, each object is independently alive. Two, everything is one unitary entity. The universe is one thing, alive, with one mind. Fat had found a kind of middle ground. The universe consists of one vast irrational entity into which has broken a high-order life form which camouflages itself by a sophisticated mimicry. Thereby, as long as it cares to, it remains, by us, undetected. It mimics objects and causal processes. This is what Fat claims. 
not just objects, but what the objects do. From this, you can gather that Fat conceives of zebra as very large. Please don't take my sunshine away. Please don't take my sunshine away. Please don't take my sunshine away.